When I was first learning watercolor, I noticed that for most of my paintings, they were somewhat flat. There was just something about my practices that felt kind of off. But after a bizarre moment, where I suddenly painted three reference images with little to no sketch lines, but just some, just impromptu and without fear or hesitation, I discovered something in that moment, out of my self-taught experience, something about drawing and painting to me. And that was the idea of flow and rigidity. Now, looking back in my art studies, back when I was first learning the fundamentals and some basic anatomy, one of the self-taught shenanigans I developed was the idea of flow and rigidity. The pressure of your strokes, the ebb and flow of water, the way you brush or pencil loose or rigid in order to form an image in line with your intent. In essence, it is the practice of control. However, self-taught chicanery is not that straightforward. And so there was more to just control that I learned from this idea. And so why do I call it flow and rigidity though? During the time where I stopped digital painting and went back to the basics, I practiced on faces in anatomy with my pencil drawings, and trees, nature, and landscape for my watercolor. Now, if you could notice, the human body, trees, and mountains are all products of nature. The capillaries of human blood vessels, like the arcs of lightning and branches of acacia trees. Rocks, mountains, and stone formation carved by millennia of running water. The clouds in the sky bent by the wind, water, and heat. To me, they all flowed, in a sense, and when I painted these three practice paintings impromptu, with little to no sketch lines or solid drawings to make a foundation, the result were three pieces that looked natural. They looked more realistic than my previous attempts. I applied this almost lineless practice further into future paintings, like when painting a mountainous landscape. I would simply only outline the land and mountain, and then fill in the sky, mountain, and land only by means of reference, understanding how the water flowed and not forcing it to do something it cannot do, but instead align myself with it. Like not forcing the current to flow the other way, but to find a way to let it carry me to a goal or destination not by altering nature, but myself, if you get what I mean. This extended to my drawings of the same subject and even anatomy, the way bodies flowed in their form and shape, which was especially prominent when I delved into gesture drawings. And subjects that used to confuse me, such as clothing where I would usually overcomplicate it and mess it up, by approaching it with nature and flow, imitating and observing life, the results became better. Of course it needed more work than usual. This loose approach to painting and drawing like running water gave my pictures a natural appearance, like they were moving and not just rigid pieces. It was not necessarily a strict practice, but a mental approach to the pencil or brush in reference to an image or real life. To be able to replicate or imitate nature into a medium, in this case, drawing and painting. Although I would wager it could be applied to other forms of art. However, when it came to drawing mechanical-centric subjects, man-made buildings, machinery, and whatnot, my approach with flow usually makes a great foundation which made the process understandable, but it was indeed missing something, a sense of oomph, where before my subjects of nature, trees, people, animal, and landscapes, I needed the feel of motion and flow. My problem now when drawing buildings, mechs, and armor was a sense of sturdiness, a solid structure, and an unmoving nature to them. In the very beginning, I always desired to draw and paint medieval fantasy illustrations, and while I achieved a good chunk of them, color, bodies, trees, landscape, etc., armor, buildings, and man-made items such as weapons, tools of sorts, still felt out of place. Now this is where I turned back to my practice of drawing foundational sketches in lines, and doubling down on that process. The sketches from there on out would not only serve as a foundation for the pencil or pigment over it, but would intentionally add definition to the final piece. Which means I would no longer force watercolor to darken areas at some points, nor wait until the rendering step when drawing, 
but use firm and rigid black areas to create definition as part of the final result. It created this effect of enhanced detail and form. The subjects would be more well defined and in watercolor, I had a much easier time with the reading values as the darks and lights had sufficient contrast due to already being established in earlier processes. I became more rough with the lines, becoming more confident with the strokes. The permanence of the darkness no longer instilling fear into me. These highly affected my mechs, armor, and buildings in all mediums I practiced. However, despite this nice little thing being developed, I knew that it could not be applied to everything as my trees would become stiff, my skies and clouds look flat and strange, I realized that rigidity, with all its umph, definition, and dominating aspect in my pieces, was not meant to be alone, much like how flow, while being great and giving life to my paintings, was missing something. Then I realized, of course, I needed them both. And so after all that time from 2018 to early 2020, in late 2020 to early 2021, I had a little breakthrough in both my watercolor, pencil, and digital painting. By combining the two ideas, I was finally able to paint armor that actually looked like armor, first in watercolor. Now, in this piece, the process of drawing the armor with stiff rigid lines, then using the watercolor like the lasso tool, filling it with blank water, then blotting both sides with a drop of pigment, with the space in between them where the light would hit the material, created this effect of armor. Which I realize now was essentially just a contorted mirror, which reflected its surroundings and the amount of dirt or rust, affecting its level of reflectivity. Moving forward with this, I was finally able to paint armor, clothing, and flesh with convincing presentation, most prominent in my gladiator paintings. From environments and landscapes, I was able to express a sense of distance with mountains and mist, the clouds soft and fluffy in contrast with the rough and rigid mountain. In my pencil drawings, like this Gigachad, I played with the ebb and flow of values making convincing muscles. Well, convincing at that time with my skill, at least. As for my digital painting, my progress with materials such as clothing and metal did need time since at first you can see the flatness, yet the lessons were present at such a moment. Inevitably though, it all came together like a capillary reaction over time. Eventually, my digital art caught up, and throughout a couple of years also went through a phase of only flow, then only rigidity, and one day a combination of both in its own little way. And so in the end, the process, practice, and result from all these chicanery produced a portfolio that was presentable, and I am proud of them for their time. But until today, I am still practicing, still improving and making new things, for in the end, I will never be perfect, which means I am eternally improving, until my own mortality takes me. I am proud of myself for undertaking this journey as it gives my life a sense of meaning. Ultimately though, this is my own little individual flame in the plethora of embers that occupy this great big earth. And everyone else has their own thing, their own story or their own pursuit. No matter how humble or grand, they should take a healthy amount of pride in it. You should take a healthy amount of pride in your own achievements as well. You should. <laughs> And so that was my experience on learning control, which took a rather philosophical route for some reason, if you would consider it philosophical, self-taught shenanigans and all, but it's that unorthodox path to learning such as self-taught learning that kind of sparks interest and something to talk about like having one's own personal tale in the future, a little legend for oneself, you know, it's something you don't really experience when your teachings are structured. You get to learn on your own and see other things that other people don't, or at least, you know, what the curriculum doesn't show you. At best, this little video essay revealed something significant, or at the very least, gave something to think about no matter how small. Although in the end, you know, this is my own journey, and uh, it may not be so bedazzling to others, but it was bedazzling to me. <laughs> I think so that's about it. I thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great day. And remember, 
whatever you're pursuing, be it art, your hobby, your job, no matter what happens, in the end, you'll have lived a life without regret. And that's saying something. Until then, see you.